Hello and welcome back. Um, now that we have imported all our graphics and converted them to vectors, positioned them, cleaned them up, used uh, emboss to create the 3D surfaces that are the backdrop to all of this, it's time to leave the design phase behind and start getting into the manufacturing phase. So we'll start off by defining our stock uh, in D25. Um, believe that is a slightly different process and probably has already happened at this point but uh, in my case I'm running D24 standard so I pretty much just have to do it before I start doing the uh, the toolpath operations so six and a quarter by seven and three quarters let's see I think I yeah, changed the thickness to three quarters and I had it blanked for some reason. There we go. So now I'm going to do the V carves up front. Then I'm going to come in behind them with the roughing tool path into the dished area. And then I'm going to come back behind that with the finishing tool paths into the dished area. Uh, that's tool paths multiple, not tool paths singular. And there's a reason for that, which I'll get into when I get to those. So for starters, we go to mill three axis and V carve. You will have V carve if you have Bob Art. If you don't have Bob Art, I would have to wonder why you've gotten this far into this presentation. So select geometry. We pick everything, and I am going to deselect the ellipse and the profile of the cross. Uh, neither one of those gets V carved. So, uh, no boundaries to select in this. I'll just click OK. Move on to next. One tenth of an inch above this rapid plane. Top of parts at zero. That's fine. No rotary angled output. Um, my tool library, I'm going to be using a 45 degree Amana insert bit for this. Uh, pretty nice bit. You can also use, uh, well, you can use any V shaped bit for this. Um, the bits that I used until I got the insert bits were some carbide, Kyocera carbide bits from, uh, oh, the name of the store escapes me, but he's called the Drill Man, or Drill Man 1, I believe, in on eBay. Um, has really high quality twist bits or twist end mills at really reasonable prices. Uh, they're, they're mostly surplus. They're, they're really good, though. I've, I've gotten great use out of them. Cutting feed rate on this, uh, we can go up to about 24 inches a minute. There's a lot of zigzagging and moving around, so there's no real reason to try to go for a high uh, cutting feed rate because essentially you almost never get out of the acceleration phase, at least in my machine, which is big and kind of slow and built out of plywood. So, uh, there's nothing in here that's wide enough to need a pocket, uh, so I don't have to worry about that depth of cut uh, I'll just specify six tenths of an inch this bit can do it it's rather large it'll none of the tool paths will go that deep but uh, that's really all it needs to know so I reselect my geometry accept that have it compute the tool path which will only take a moment and the only thing you can see above the bob art surface in this case is the uh, rapids. If you go beneath it, you can see all the tool pathing on there. The uh, bob art surface is opaque. The stock, or stock is actually translucent. Now, because I'm going to be doing multiple tool paths, I'm going to click under V carve, left click there, excuse me. Yeah. And uh, blank that. So, blanking the tool paths as I go just to keep them from stacking up on each other so that I can see if I do something wrong. It, it gives me some visual indication instead of this just being a sea of light blue here in a moment. And that one didn't really matter, but I'm, I'm just in the habit of doing it to uh, all of them. All right, now for the roughing toolpath. Go to mill three axis and Z level rough. All right, selecting geometry this time. I'm selecting the bob art surface. Click OK. And I'm going to be putting boundaries on this one. The ellipse is the outer boundary. And the profile of the cross is the inner boundary. Click OK on that. 
Rapids at a tenth of an inch above. Top of parts at zero. That's good. Um, I don't really need arc fit. I'm just kind of in the habit of clicking arc fit anytime I'm doing anything near a curve. Uh, in this case, I will be using a uh, quarter inch ball nose end mill. And speeds and feeds. I generally do these on the fly. Um, you, you're sticking all kinds of stuff into a router all the time. You, unless you're unless you're running the same kind of stock with the same tools all the time, you're going to be changing up feeds and speeds anyway. So I just am in the habit of doing it manually. Uh, it's not the most efficient way to do it by any means, but it works for me. Uh, got a pocket in toolpath that works for me. Climb mills good. All right, depth of cut. I'm going to go with 0 0.05 inch depth of cut because I don't want to leave big terrace rows for the uh, one eighth ball nose finish to come back in and be you know doing a couple of uh, hundredths in one sec and then half a tenth in the, or a tenth in the next. Step over tenth of an inch, that's good too. Allowance, I'm going to give couple of hundreds allowance on this uh, that it'll, it'll leave a couple of hundreds of wood in for the uh, finished paths set the top of job at zero plunge is fine uh, there are some fancy tool paths where it can well the part that's got you know an inner section and then a lot of profiling on the outer you can have it uh, break that up on its own in this case it's just going to work between the boundaries uh, it will separate out into areas uh, but that'll all work pretty much automatically all right, that should be good. I'm going to go back and make sure that my geometry is set correctly, which it tends to drop bob art surfaces. I don't know why. Uh, boundaries are fine. Click OK. And have it compute the toolpath. The Z-Level rough toolpath is not that complex. It doesn't take that long for it to generate. I will actually uh, generate the Z-Level finish toolpaths and uh, do that offline. I'll be making a follow-up video to this showing the uh, part being machined and uh, we'll put those in the front part of that. So there's the roughing toolpath. It'd be difficult to see in the video but it uh, basically goes down half a uh, tenth of an inch. Or excuse me, what is the uh, depth of cut? Yeah, it's half a tenth. Clears off every bit of material in these areas and then steps down. It'll follow the uh, the curve of the dished part and uh, not leave terribly big step overs or step downs uh, for the 1 8 ball nose finish pass to uh, take out. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to blank it. And I'll go ahead and define these two uh, finish tool paths. I will not actually generate them because both of them are going to take quite a bit of time to generate and you'll just be sitting there watching a progress bar. I will go ahead and discuss up front what I'm going to do with them. Z-level finish is predicated on depth, the depth of the part. And that's the way you get your step over on Z-level finish. So if I set three one thousandths of an inch, which is what I'm going to do on the first pass, over here on the edge, it goes down in very small step overs because it's plunging almost vertically downward. It's going, you know, three thousandth, then another three thousandth, then another three thousandth, and the lines as it actually traverses across are very close together. Once it gets down to oh roughly in here, the curve starts to flatten out, such that, say down here, it steps down three one thousandths and it steps over six one thousandths. Then it steps down another three one thousandths and it steps over seven one thousandths. Then it steps down three one thousandths and it steps over eight and then twelve. And the lines start getting pretty darn visible at that point. Because I'm running V24 standard and not pro, I don't have access to the equidistant offset toolpath, so I have to go at it with a ghetto hack. I'm going to go down doing three thousandths depth of cut until 0.3 inches or actually 0.31 inches below surface here below the top of stock and that's going to be the end of that toolpath 
then I'm going to do another toolpath that starts at three tenths of an inch, um, what, uh, 0 0.01 inches higher than that, so that the, the toolpaths overlap. And it will go from there down to the bottom doing a one thousandths depth of, depth of cut. And this will keep at the very bottom here the, uh, the step overs within reason so that I don't have big old furrows that I have to try to sand out. Uh, again, if, if you have pro and you have equidistant offset, then that's what you want to use in a case like this. Uh, because I don't, I have to break it up or I have to just do a lot of sanding in a pretty awkward little spot to sand. So that's the reasoning behind uh, doing what I'm fixing to do, which is set up two different finishing paths. Go to Z-Level Finish. Next, select Geometry. I'm selecting the Bob Art Surface and clicking OK. My boundaries are the same as the uh, roughing pass. I need the ellipse and I need the profile of the cross. Click OK. Next, I've got my rapids fine, top of part is fine, arc fit. Uh, Going to be using a 1 8 ball nose on this. And feeds and speeds will say 48 inches per minute. And 40 plunge. Climb mill is good. Depth of cut. All right, this is the upper pass. I'm going with three thousandths depth of cut. Allowance is zero. I have no holes to worry about. Top of job is at zero. Bottom of job is at negative 0 0.31. So it'll go down just below three tenths of an inch below the surface. And then the next tool path will pick up at three tenths so that there's a little overlap. Uh, plunge entry, vertical, same as lead in, yes. Uh, the options here don't really apply that much to me because I'm using boundaries. Uh, it's going to tool path everything. I'm going to use the tool tip and it can process by area, that's fine. Links and boundaries, put them both on follow and finish. Now I'm going to rename that really quickly to reflect the fact that that is the upper finishing pass. And that'll distinguish it from the lower finishing pass, which I'll go ahead and define now. Z level finish. Same geometry, same boundaries. Ah, I think I canceled that. There. All right, go to next. The rapids are good, top of part is good. Select arc fit. Once again, we'll use a 1 8 inch ball nosed end mill and set our feeds and speeds. If you're using the same thing all the time, then you probably don't want to do this manually every single time the way I'm doing it. Uh, I know there's a lot of uh, people with more experience or who have different working habits than, uh, than me that will cringe every time they see me doing that, but I do it on a, a, a per operation basis. I'm always setting the feed speeds differently. I throw a lot of different materials in there. I've got a lot of different things going on, and for me it just makes more sense. Now in this one we're going to do a one thousandth depth of cut because we're flattening out. We're, we're doing less and less uh, vertical movement and more and more horizontal movement with our tool paths. So we want the vertical movement as fine, as granular as, as possible. Uh, again, we're doing zero allowance. We're going right to the geometry. There are, once again, no holes to worry about. The top of job at this point is negative three-tenths of an inch. Bottom of job we don't have to worry about because it will go down to the, uh, to the bob art surface, to the, to the uh, extent of the geometry. So that will provide for our toolpath overlap. That will try to keep our, uh, our 
tool path spacing as close as possible by shifting to the uh, finer depth of cut. Our plunge entry and vertical, same as lead in, those are all fine. Uh, once again, I don't really need any of the, uh, the nice options that are provided here. This is a pretty simple part and I'm using boundaries. Uh, we'll set the boundary links to follow along with the normal links and finish that up. That pretty much concludes the toolpathing. I will have a follow-up video where I will uh, show the toolpathing. Um, I'm also going to cut this part in the morning and I will show some videos of that going on, show you the part itself, and uh, just kind of uh, do my best to wrap the series up. Thanks very much for watching. Have a nice day.